Music is by my late brother, Al Haj Aziz, also known as Leonardo Chesson. Also, my little Chesson. Leo recently passed away. He was a Liberian musician, a political educator, and a political science enthusiast. I'm playing his music to begin my shows in memory of his Liberianism and his zeal to see Liberia move forward as a progressive, unified nation. The world is going crazy. Tell them, them. ladies and gentlemen boys and girls men and women all of you out there my black people my black communities around the world welcome to Tony Commander J.R. Kapokma Chesson talk show today is September 21st today is Monday we begin a new week so let's start with our news for this week now in Liberia I was reading through front page Africa and I read that President George Weah of Liberia had recently announced through his Minister of Health that all the health workers that are currently striking for their hazardous pay and back pay and all the allotments that are due them because of their efforts and their sacrifices during Ebola, during this current crisis, of COVID-19 that has even taken a lot of their lives. Now, instead of paying the people and bringing them on par in this dire time of need for our health workers and health professionals, our president has come out and announced to his Minister of Health that the health workers need to be replaced. Those who are on strike need to be fired and new workers need to be hired. Now, first of all, pray tell me, Liberian people, I didn't know we had so many health professionals in Liberia. I didn't know we had so many doctors and nurses and, and health aides and midwives. I didn't know we had so many people. We had so many people that we need to be sending them to other countries to help. So. Why are all these professionals in Liberia sitting down and not working? And we got so many needs, health needs in our country, our country, all over our country. Why are all these people sitting in my river and not working? That George Weah can dismiss a group of health workers who are currently working in our health in uh, in our health departments and health hospitals and want to hire new people, where will we get all these other professionals from to come make up for these health workers that are on strike? I mean, I didn't know we had so many people around. But this is where our government is taking us, and this is a terrible example. You don't have money to pay the people. You don't have money to, to, to subsidize 
the needs for our health situations in Liberia. Then you come and fi say you're firing the people because they're protesting for the money they deserve, for the people who have died to pay their family off. This is craziness. And this is kind of dysfunctional leadership we got. Our president paying his, his, his government officials and everybody and want to fire our health workers who are the essential workers of our country today. So these are the things we're facing. So these are my topics above. Pay the health workers. Get those people back online. Even if you got to lose your pay, George Weir, make sure those people get paid. Satisfy them. Negotiate with them. If there's no money in the country, let somebody sit with the people and make terms for them to get paid. But they got to get paid. These are essential workers and you can't play with them. Our country, this disease is prevalent all over the world. It hasn't ceased and exists. So how do you fire, fire our health workers? Where you will get more health workers from? <laughs> this, this order from the president is that we got so many health workers just sitting down and our country is in dire need of workers, medication, facilities, and we don't have these things. But this is the problem with our country today. I was listening to Reverend Alexander Red of the of the what, what his church called uh, some uh, evangelistic church. Um, yes, he was uh, Alexander Red. What church he came from? Bible Fellowship Church somewhere in America, yeah, the Bible Fellowship Church. And he had a lit interview session with a few Liberians, including Patrick Nimli Sietua, my boy from Eula, <laughs> all around. And he had Justice, Justice Gloria Musu Scott. He also had Reverend Sua Dede, and these people were talking about the problems we have in Liberia today. I think they're still on Facebook. You need to go and find their pages and listen to the discussion. They were talking about our religious principles, our religious standing versus our church. Where did Liberia go wrong? How did our religious community become so dysfunctional, so distrusting, so greedy? of money and political power. When did our church become so terrible? They talk about Mother Dukla them, and way back when we had real reverence and things on the tour, but how every time they used to put us, put out a ministerial letter every three months and, 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 and emphasizing the religious state of the country and guiding our leaders on what needs to be done in the religious realm of our community. Now they say today, we got a lot of Liberians coming out talking about Liberia is a circular state, Liberia didn't, they would have Christian principles thing got to be uh, done with and finished. We're not under that religious thing no more, we're a circular state. And, and Justice Musu Scott tried to explain to our people why our religious principles are so significant to our developmental processes today. In spite of the fact that our laws are mundane and secular, that mean earthly, secular mean earthly, they're not spiritual, they're not coming from no divine inspiration or authority or anything. Despite the fact that our nation is a secular nation. Our constitution in its outline impresses upon the Liberian people that our religious foundation, our constitutional inspiration that inspired, that motivated all of us to write this constitution is because of our Christian principles. Now let me tell you something. 
Justice Musu Scott kept using the right term, Judeo Christian, Judeo Christian. But what you got to understand that when we use Judeo Christian, it refers to Islam, it refers to all of the three religions of the world, the three great religions Judaism, Islam, and Christianity. Those are the three religions and three great religions. And those three great religions of the world rely on Judeo Christian, not Christian, Judeo teachings. The teachings of the Jews. Islam rely on the Old Testament, the same God of Israel. But he came to them in a different form. That's why I tell you, we have no power to condemn the powers and might and to question the will of the Almighty God. His will is beyond our questioning or beyond our attempt to justify or anything. We can't justify it. Only God can justify his action. Only God can tell us why he did this. It is not our place to justify it. If he comes to people, he can come to anybody he wants to come to. We have no authority to question that will of God. All we have to do is accept it and see where it will lead us. We don't have to follow it, but we have to be tolerant of it. Once it follows the rules of peace, coexistence of all people in the world, and good relationship, we got to accept it. And Islam is not a threat to Christianity, except for those radical Islam, Islamic folks who want to spread religion by force and by any means necessary. That's where we have to put a stop to that and tell them, no, your rights end where our rights begin. Okay? There are many paths to the one God, and we have no power to determine whose path is the right path. Our path we choose because we believe on Jesus Christ's teaching and our experiences through his manifestation and teachings and, and, and our beliefs in everything he teaches us. So if it works for us, it works for us. If it, something else works for the other people, it works for them. We don't have to follow it, but we cannot judge them. Only if they do things that are immoral and sinful to the world, okay? All Muslim people do not perpetrate spreading religion by force. So we cannot judge all of them on that same basis. There are some Islamic people who are wiser than others, who understand that we got to live in a coexisting state in our survival on this plane. And in doing so, we have to be tolerant of each other. We have to understand that our rights in this world cannot infringe upon the other rights, the rights of other people. And in guiding our and protecting our own rights, we stand justified in defending what we have. So this is the, the policy we have to understand. That although we have a circular world, yes, our laws are circular. They don't re, they don't uh, uh, hinge on any religious teaching of any religious sect. And the reason why we divide church from state is because when you talk about church, church encompasses religion in, as a whole. Whether it's Christian, whether it's, it's Islamic, whether it's uh, Juju, or, uh, animism, whether any kind of religion, all of that falls on the church. In the old days when Jesus divided church from state, that way he didn't use the word church. He didn't say church. He said, render unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's and unto God the things that are God's. So that encompasses every religion. Jesus said God. And we have many, many gods. And he teaches us that too. He said, choose me above all other gods. So he's telling us there are many gods, but his teaching is profound and is foundational in our lives. So when he used the word church, you know there were no church in those days. We had a synagogue and everybody knew the synagogue. 
I don't know what the Jewish people call theirs, but they were the ruling people. They were the political head of Israel. So their coin was circulated all through Israel. And on one side, the coin had the head of Caesar. So Jesus said, this is for Caesar. This is mundane. This is earthly. Render unto him the things that are his. The laws, the mundane laws, the laws made by Congress, the laws made by legislature, they are all mundane laws. Our constitution is not mundane. That separates our constitution from statutory laws. Statutory laws are laws made by man to satisfy the mandates of the constitution. Where there are loopholes in the constitution, the, 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 the statutes are made to follow up in those places where the law lacks full clarification. Why? Because our constitution is lasting, it's forever. So it does not strictly stress everything that needs to be done. It tells us that we need to implement the laws. For us to implement the laws, we need ministries, we need departments, we need people to train to do those kind of things. So that way we have division or tax of agriculture or all these things because we have different sector of the country that must be attended to, to fulfill the mandate of the Constitution of the Republic of Liberia. So that's why the Constitution is separate from our statutory laws. That's why our Constitution is supreme because within our Constitution, it brings every aspect of the desires of the Liberian people together. And we all know that the basic foundation of our society throughout our land is religion, is spiritual. So, we rest our spiritual knowledge and foundation of our constitution, not only on Christian principle, but on love, the foundation of the teachings of Christian principle. Love. Love thy neighbor as thyself. Do unto others as you will have them do unto you. Love your God as you will want him to be in your life. And that means every God. Every God that is law-abiding, that supports and is tolerant of communal living, of coexisting with other peoples and races in peace and harmony. Not always confusion and, and, and seeking and disharmony and war and all kind of stupidness. So these are the foundation upon which our country was founded and it is separate. Our constitution is separate from our statutory laws because the statutory laws are made by representatives of the people. Whereas the constitution is approved by the people of the Republic of Liberia. The people of all religions, of all sects, of all of all uh, sexes. Sects and sexes are two different things. Sects have to do with different creeds and religion groups and different, they call them sex too. Sex, sex. S-E-C-T-S, sex. So you have these sex and you have sexism. So these are two different things. So we have to be mindful of all these things when we are making laws. So that why our constitution encompass all the dreams and desires and wishes of the people of the Republic of Liberia. And all our wishes are not only circular. The foundation of our wishes is spiritual. And our constitution recognizes that. That in everything we do spiritually, our constitution is based on the Christian principle of the only God, excuse me, of the only God that spoke about love in his existence and teachings. The only God that talked about do unto others as you have them do unto you. The only God that talked about love that God with all your mind, with all your soul, and with all your spirit. That is 
the Christian principle that teaches all of that. But it's not only Christian, it's also Judeo, which encompasses the three great religions of our world today. The three religions that most of the people of the world follow. So there can be no mistaking. There can be no mistaking to, to say, oh, the, the, the law is secular, it, it, that is not spiritual. No, you can't say that. Because when you say law, you have to differentiate the types of laws we have in our country. We don't just have one law. We have about four or five laws in our country. We have a statutory law. We have, a, well, first of all, we have the first law of the land is the Constitution. Then you have statutes. Then you have common law. Then you have traditional laws. So we have four different types of laws in Liberia. And all these laws are succinct and holy and divine because they these laws cover the laws that fall under the constitution of the Republic of Liberia. None of these laws that are subordinate to the constitution can be in disagreement with the constitution of Liberia. Any law that is in disagreement or incongruity with the laws of the Republic of Liberia are void and unlawful. So everything is covered. Everything is covered on the desire of the Liberian people. So you can come out individually and say, oh, our law is secular, our law is mundane. You can't bring it. Yes, our law is mundane. The subordinate laws other than the Constitution are mundane. But in the Constitution, we expressly state our desires, our dreams, and our aspirations for the Republic of Liberia and what we need our officials to perform in the execution of their official duties. So these are the principles we have to come with everything for our country. That's why our divine leadership is holy. And you can't play with that. And when our divine leadership makes this religion with the power of our country, that is a sin because our country is not supposed to come together with religion like that, where the, the state is the head of the church and you get there and use the religion to facilitate his evil action, to, to buttress the things he do. Okay? So these things are all stated in our Christian, Judeo, Christian, Islamic principles. All of us, despite our, our race, our background, we all follow the God of Israel. And he can't change. You can't deceive him. You can't change it. Read the Old Testament. Go read the Quran. It's the same thing word for word. You know, the only thing that changes the Quran are the commentary and the teachings of the prophets and of those that are led the faith after the caliphs and all the people, they interpret the Old Testament. They interpret the Bible and how they interpret it is how they function. But the Old Testament and the Quran are no different. So if you read the Quran, you read the thing, the only difference in the Quran are the commentaries at the bottom from the teachers and, and the, the, the prophets and all those things. They explain the text up and in the way they want it, in the way they see it. But the Bible is the Bible. Through every religion, there is only one God of Israel. And nobody can change that because that God is supreme. So all this come back to our leadership in our country today. Why is Liberia's leadership so bad? Why is Liberia's leadership so dysfunctional? Why is Liberia leadership without guidance and corruption? With guide without guidance and so corrupt. Why? That's why everybody bring me Ellen Johnson Sellif. Because all our elders were killed in the war or they, they, they left Liberia and stayed out of Liberia for the rest of the time, even to today. And as we see it, our country is run amok. 
because we have nothing but young people leading our country today. All the leaders of our country today were young people who started a war in our country. They were not educated. They started this war, led by Ellen Johnson Selly. She started it. And she is the older, the eldest official in our government today. But she had destroyed our country so bad because she come from the same stock of Torba and Tottenham and all of that. And instead of changing our country, she followed the same pattern she knew. That was the only pattern she knew. She knew no other pattern. All her years in America, she never led people. She worked for the World Bank. She carried our World Bank policy. And that's the problem with people coming from abroad and serving our government. Because you cannot serve the Liberian government if you don't understand, truly understand, and have lived the plight of the Liberian people. And that one makes it different. That one makes it harder. And we have to understand these things because that's our connection with the world. That's our connection with everything we stand for. That's our connection with everything we believe in. You see, and with all these foundational things in our life, justice can prevail in our country. We have to set these things and our foundation and our beliefs correct and strong. We have to understand that these things are the mechanisms that make us great and powerful, that make our nation prosperous and successful. So we cannot change these things in our lives. We gotta understand that these things make us who we are. Okay? So our leaders are held with the great responsibility of providing for our country and people and making sure that the lives of our children are met with the right opportunities for progress and advancement in everything we do. So my people, George Rea, you gotta pay the health people. You all gotta pay these people. You all gotta make sure these people's lives are satisfied and whatever efforts they put into developing our country, they are rewarded, they are paid. And we can't keep playing with the lives of our people. We can't keep putting the lives of our people in jeopardy. We gotta satisfy the needs of our people that are working and putting their lives on the line and sacrificing their families to care for Liberian people. Pay those health workers. Stop this foolishness about rehiring people when you still don't have the money to pay the new people you want to rehire. So let justice be done in our country. Justice must prevail and our leadership must take care of our people as effectively as they should. Now, let's go into the second thing, this catch, catch for votes. We can't continue on this thing. We can't continue on this thing Young people, you need elders to advise you, to talk to you about the plight of our country and people. We can't continue on this dysfunctional path. We can't continue to bring our nation and people to disrepute by our actions and our failures to act under the Constitution and laws as patriotic. Liberian citizens. Now we gotta go back, like, uh, like uh, Reverend uh, Alexander Red and all of them were talking in his podcast this morning with the with the fellowship uh, Bible fellowship group or something wherever it was. They said it. They want to have a revival of all the ministers in Liberia because the church has gone astray. The leaders of the church have failed and they continue to fail because our church and our community lack elders and leaders 
who were there in our community to instill guidance, to instill direction. The people that came after 1980 came for themselves. They had no concept of leadership. They came from abroad with their ideas. They came in Liberia, Amos Sawyer, all of them came to rob us. They knew nothing. They knew nothing. Now he just had a brain operation in America, Amos Sawyer, and recuperating for his brain dead cells that led our country to what it is today. And we can't continue to go on this path. We can't continue to have a few people break our country down, break our laws, and break our religious foundation. It's gone on too long. It has gone on too long. I don't want to stay here too long this morning because we're going on the same point over and over and over and over. But we need to stress the significance necessary for change. The significance of a hard work that is necessary for change in our country. The significance of honest, educated men and women who care for our people and our country, knowing the real problems. Not coming with ideas from foreign country or what we think the people should do, but we need leaders who know and understand our culture and people and are willing and ready to resurrect the Liberia. Why? Because we know our past. We know our history. We know what brought us down, especially those of us who went to school and were educated during that era and worked in that era of the First Republic. And we see this new era of Liberians. We knew that there were problems then, and we know that there are far more problems now. Why? Because we lack the people that are needed to teach our young people. We lack elders of consciousness, of love, and discipline. We lack those kind of elders. All the people who guy around us in our country are nothing but warlords and murderers and rapists. And that's why our country cannot change. Not only the Liberia, the Ellen Jersey fails, America fails too. America and the international community know that they cannot resurrect a country from war and put the same warlords and criminals in power. And by not speaking up and setting the standards for, for re-election and, and, and order in Liberia and knowing that they have been there with us throughout this war, they have participated in the war with us and they left us to Ellen Johnson Sally to resurrect our system and left us to the warlords. Ellen Johnson Sally is a warlord. No matter what kind of war they gave her, they can make her the greatest woman in the world. She's still a warlord. She's a killer and destroyer of Liberia. And America perpetuated it with her. And we're about to set her up even greater than this. Our country is our country. People can't keep destroying our country and bringing us down to now. As Liberian patriots, our young children still lack the consciousness of what it is to be a great nation of people. Why? Because they have never had the guidance of real good leaders. Amos Sawyer, Ellen Johnson, those are all great people that overthrew our government for their own greed and advertisement. They fail us. They fail us badly. They destroy our country. So we, those of us who never really work in government, those of us who understand the foundation of our society, our country, the politics, the laws, but have not put our hands in this corrupt era of Liberian deception and lies. This is the era of deception and lies to betray our young children. And you're going to come to your senses. You're going to look around you, see your conditions, and understand that you need better. Understand that these people are not doing what they're going to do for you. There is no way that Ellen Johnson and George Weah came to save you and you're still 
living in slum and still we still our country is still dirty and nasty our children can't be employed can't go to school can't get the right education all our government officials own everything in the country something wrong with the country george we can't own other houses his ministers can't own other houses building schools and all the things they are giving up money in the street in a poor country people dying and suffering and our ministers they are giving up raw cash for votes where they can have money from there is no money in our country and how you destroy our country by giving up packages for votes this is destruction corruption of the minor you destroy our country and that man needs to go to jail father needs to go to jail he needs to be interrogated where he get all that money from when our country is poor and suffering and he been a, a, a representative for so many years now these people must account for the corruption and stealing of the wealth of the people of the public now let me get to my final point for over 60 years now all my life from the day i was born to this very day Liberia has remained in darkness. Look at our third point. Why our country got to be in darkness like this? Huh? All my life we've been at this. We're all cutting down. We fought the government for this thing. For this same problem, we fought the government. We had strikes. There were constant strikes all through cutting them. All through my elementary days, there were, there were, uh, 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 rationing of electricity in Liberia. Then when it got better in Liberia, I went to cotton them. Same thing there. Every week current going, every month current going. We got a ration cover, current. Daytime, no current. Nighttime, current. The, what is this? I'm 60 plus years now. And this thing has been going on all my life we have not changed we keep going backwards and backwards we have not changed children we keep going backwards and backwards how long will they persist in our Liberian society how long will we continue to live the way we live in? how long will we live in darkness everybody else in the world striving Live in darkness. Look around you, Liberian children. Sorry for all these things. Look around you, my Liberian children. We deserve far better than this. Look around you, my Liberian children. The time of decent and honest Liberian people is now. The Tony Commander J. Araco Pope by Chesson is here to teach you. And let you know we can do far better, far, far, far better even today. To change our country, we better put all this corruption aside, all this selling our votes. I know you're so low voter, you people, it means nothing. They give me a card, you go cancel those cards and get your real cards and go vote. Get your honest real cards and vote for the life of our country for the life of our people, for the survival of our nation, resurrection of Liberia as a great African nation and republic. Time of the Liberian people is here. We need to do better for ourselves and our country. And we need to set standards for the future of our country. So our children know country is for all of us. It's our foundation. It's the only hope we have. As now and for now. If we don't set it right, we don't set the foundation of our laws correct, we don't let our people know that we have principles of decency, honesty, and laws to protect us under one God. We not make it. Our laws are secular. Unlike our constitution, no other laws in Liberia persists, persists as a constitution because our constitution encompasses 
every dream, every desire, every feeling of the Liberian people of what we want for our country. Liberia is a religious country. All our people are religious. So our constitution represents our divine religious oneness and communal belief for what we want for our country. And everybody to be treated as we want. Everybody to love their gods. Once we all put our laws together to protect our nation, those laws encompass all the feelings and the beliefs and the collective interests of the Liberian people in the Constitution. It's both divine and secular. But it's divine in the way that it does not place any religion over our society, over our government, over our leadership. The religious principles that we have is to guide all of us on the path that we want to be treated by each other, that we want for us to treat each other. So all of us have responsibility on our laws and we cannot associate our constitution with the subordinate laws. Our constitution was agreed upon by all Liberian citizens with all our beliefs, all our aspirations, all our desires encompassed in that one country. So, your country failed today. If our country failed today, it is because we have lost our ideals of nationalism, patriotism, and humanism. And we must get it back. We must get it back. And this government of George Manawia is too ignorant, too blind, and too uneducated and greedy to fulfill the true desires of a patriotic, sincere, loving government for, of, and by the people of the West African Republic of Liberia. The time of the Liberian people is now. The time for us to stand up for what we believe in is now. The time for us to stand up for the country we hope to have now and tomorrow is now. Aluta continua. My lesson is ending. Have a good day, ladies and gentlemen. So the commander G. Arakopokwa Chesson is out. So let me leave you with Leonardo. Let him take us out. Let my brother take us out. Take us up left. Because we hope that the blessings of the Almighty God continue to shine on our Liberian people as we move forward. Okay? Hey. Also, I see you folks. Be good to each other and see you tomorrow morning. Going on the first time.